In this video, I want to derive the equation d equals vf times t minus one-half at squared. This is one of our big five equations that describe constantly accelerated motion. We've got five equations that do it. We're going to go ahead and describe and derive this third equation. And again, the givens are initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, time, and displacement. We'll notice this equation that we're going to derive doesn't have initial velocity. So that'd be a good choice when we don't need to know initial velocity. It's not a given. It's not what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and derive this third equation for constantly accelerated motion. This is the equation we're going to try and derive. Like the other ones for displacement, it's based on the concept that if I have a velocity graph, some sort of a straight line velocity graph, the displacement is given by the area under the VT graph. That's the basic concept. So basically I'm looking for if this is t seconds, if this is my starting velocity, my initial velocity, and this is my ending velocity, my final velocity, I'm looking for a way to say what this trapezoidal area is. And without using the trapezoid equation for areas, I can notice something. This area is basically the same if I redraw this graph. And sort of my new version of my velocity graph. This area here is the same as if I drew a line across and said, I'm going to take the rectangle area, that big rectangle, and take that area. That's a little bit too much. I'm going to take that rectangle area and I'm going to subtract out the triangle area. And that'll be the same as this displacement. So in this version, we say, okay, the area I'm looking for, the area under graph one, is the same as the area of that really tall rectangle minus the area of that kind of lopsided top triangle. The area of that big rectangle, in general, the area of a rectangle is length times width and the area of a triangle is a half base height. So we just do that in terms of our givens. This is, let's call this the length of that big rectangle. That'd be like VF. Let's call this the width of that big rectangle. That'd be T. And then I have to subtract the area of this triangle, a half times base times height. A half base is T. Height is this difference here for this triangle. That'd be VF minus vi. And if you were watching the last video, you probably know where we're headed. We're going to take this vf minus vi and do that in terms of a slightly different way of showing it. At this point, we have an expression for d. It's just not the one we're aiming for. So to get the one we're aiming for, we remind ourselves that vf equals vi plus at. And another way to write that is vf minus vi is at. So I'm going to sub in vf minus vi. That's this underlined part. That's also AT. Let's go ahead and sub AT in for this underlying part. This gives me VF times T minus a half times T, and then instead of VF minus VI, AT. So our big final answer is VFT minus a half. We put those two T's together and call it T squared. And there's our third derived equation. Whoops, sorry. There's our third derived equation for uniformly accelerated motion or constant acceleration motion.